Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Code with P. In this video, we are going to talk about higher order functions. This is very important aspect of functional programming. We can write our program in different style of programming. We already do write our Java program in imperative way of programming. We can also write our program in functional style of programming thanks to Java 8. Let's look at what are higher order functions. Higher order functions are the functions that takes function as an input or they returns the function as an output. What does that mean? So when we deal with Java programs, we define methods. And while calling these methods, we need the reference of the class. That is, to call any Java method, we need either the instance of the class or if those are the static method, then we can call those methods using the class reference. When it comes to functions or functional programming, there is no concept of classes. You can define your functions at any level of your program. It can be at the top level. You can define functions within functions or you can assign the function as the variables that we define in Java. In the similar way, you can also pass the functions as an input to your functions and also you can return them as the output. Now we will see how we can apply the higher order functions in our Java program. To work with that, let's look at one of the problem statements that we have. So here we have a class sum utils which has method sum. So it takes int a and int b as an input and it returns sum of both of these values. Now we have defined one test case which verifies the method. We have one more requirement which is to identify sum of square of two numbers. Here we have the sum method and now Instead of passing 3, we can pass 3 into 3 and 2 into 2, so it sums up to 13. If we need to call this method again and again in different scenarios, we definitely need to define some method. So we can define the method in our sum utils, sum of square of numbers. So what it does it, it calls the sum method, squares the first number and it squares the second number as well. So now we can call this method in our test case. So it is going to return the same thing. But now if we have one more requirement, which is finding out the sum of cubes of numbers, then again, we need to write one more method here in sum mutual. Cube of numbers, we can definitely do it, but it is against the solid design principles because we are changing the sum mutual class every now and then whenever we are getting a new requirement. To make it better, let's define one interface operation and we can define one method here which is apply and int a so instead of class we can define an interface so this method takes integer and returns the integer we need to define some of the implementation of it so here we can define one of the implementation which is square operation and this implements the interface that we have just defined we need to implement the method here so for squaring of the number we can simply do square a and similarly we can define other method which is cube operation it will simply return the cube of the number and also we have a basic requirement of summing two numbers and when we use this interface then we need to have one more implementation that is just returning this identity method so here we can define one class identity operation the responsibility of this class is to just return the same value we will see why we are using this so now we have the sum util here we have method sum now we don't need the sum of square numbers and sum of cubes of numbers we can utilize the sum method to do both of these operations with the help of the classes that we have defined just now sum of square numbers actually make use of the sum and applies the operations of the square similarly it applies the operation of cube so instead of having these method what we can do is we can use the operation over here and then we can use operations to apply the operations that we are intended to do Okay, and then here as well, we can do apply b. Some method now takes three parameters one is operation and then the two input. Now, this operation defines the behavior of our sum method. So, here we have got this sum method. In this case, we just need to add this 
two numbers so we can pass here the identity operation and here we can just use this sum and we can pass the new square operation when we run this test yep it should work fine so here instead of passing this square operation we can pass cube operation 27 and 8 35 if we run this again yep so it's it gives us the correct result so now what we have done is we have applied one layer of abstraction to our sum method that we are passing the behavior from outside everything is perfectly fine except for one thing that every time whenever we need to add new behavior we need to introduce new class and every class is only responsible for doing certain operations we just need this apply method but because java methods have the context associated with it which is a class or the instance of the class so we need that context to call the method in java but now suppose we need to add one more behavior we want to get some of double of two numbers so for that again we need to define a class but what if we have some kind of magic in which instead of defining a class we just pass the behavior directly to a method that is instead of passing this operation here we can simply say that we have a function that takes the int Okay, that takes the int value and return the int value. So here, what it does it, it takes a as an integer and here it simply multiply that number with two and solves our purpose. So instead of passing the class, we can just pass the behavior to it. Thanks to Java 8, we can do that. And how can we do that? So what we need here is we need the function that multiplies a number okay so here we have type in and it does the multiplication by two well this is compiling this is kind of magic when passing this expression in the sum method it expects that it has to be of type operations and there is no possibility of passing any other type so let's try to find out what is its type it has the actual type operation so whenever we define this kind of expression this is called lambda expression and this is one of the key aspect of functional programming so whenever you need to pass a function to other function you can pass that as an anonymous function this is called the lambda expression but how can this expression be converted into the operation because this is our own type right and this is the expression that java 8 has provided so now let's look at the operation interface so this interface has one method in apply is this a known type let's try to find out if i just change this apply method to some random name does our method still works yeah it does now let's try to add some of the more methods to it in test and a somehow we have started getting some problems let's look at the problem now this expression is not able to identify it as the operation type so it says multiple non-overriding abstract method found in interface so basically whenever we define any interface which has one abstract method you can utilize this type in terms of the lambda expressions that is you can define this expression how it is happening is it takes one input as integer a and returns the integer so in the operation we have defined one apply method that takes int as an input and returns int as an output so we could define one of the lambda expression that takes one integer and return the integer with the help of this we can do any kind of operation that we want we can even convert our original methods in terms of the lambda expressions so here instead of new identity operations what we can do is we can define one expression a and then it returns the a so here we did not define the type whereas we have defined the type here so we can also remove this type and we can also remove this thing similarly what we can do is we can also change this thing and we can also write it in terms of the lambda so here a square and similarly we a into a into a that is the cube operation instead of defining the types we could define in terms of the lambda expression so we have just defined one type sum 
and we can use this sum method in different ways without even writing any other types. The kind of abstraction that functional programming provides you is that even we don't need to write the operation type and Java has already provided us one of the functional type function. So here this function is an interface that takes type T and return type R. T is the input type to your method and r is the written type of your method so here we need a function of type integer and we need a type of integer we are not utilizing this operation here whereas we can use the function instead let's make it of type integer because it is a type parameter and that has to be a object type so we need to use the wrapper object for integer now let's run it again cool now we have understood how to apply the lambda expression. So this function we have defined is a functional interface. So it has only one abstract method. It has several other methods which are the default methods. So here these methods have some implementation. If it would have been the abstract then this function would not compile. To ensure that our interface is functional interface we can always define the functional interface in an R type. So if I just define at the rate functional interface and now if I try to define something else here like in test again then it will say that functional interface cannot have multiple abstract methods it will ensure that your type is always the functional type in both of the methods be it operation or function we have passed them as a method parameter this is how we already write our java program but java 8 gives more power to the programmers in a way they can call the method by passing different arguments. It gives more abstraction to your program and possibility to add more and more behaviors to your program. In functional programming, these kind of functions are called higher order functions that takes the function as an input. Because it's the object oriented programming language, there is no way in which you can define the method that takes other function as an input. But with the help of functional interfaces, we can actually mimic the same behavior so here in the sum method we have defined the function this is the object type but we can call this sum method by passing the function to it or a lambda expressions to it it takes one input type and returns the other output type so in our test cases we have defined the lambda expressions in which we have passed one input and we have returned the other type as an output so there is one input and one output. You can use by function if you have a requirement of passing two parameters as input and returns one as an output. So here we have T and U as input type and R is the return type. So you have a by function and it can take any type. So if you need integer type and then integer type and then you need the return type to be say string then you can define the two input type A and B and then you can sum them up. But here A plus B is going to give you integer. The, we can convert this to string. Similarly, if you need to define a function that takes one input but does not return anything. So we can define the consumer so it takes type t but it does not return anything so where we can use this so suppose we have this thing a string say print and this we can define whatever input we pass to it it just print out to the console and to simplify this we can use the method references if you have a method that takes only one input type so you can just refer them by the class with two colons if you need to define some function which does not take any input but returns some value we can use the supplier functional interface this type does not take any input but returns some value because it does not take any input so we have the empty parameter list we can return something from here so let's return some string if you need to test for certain condition, you can use predicate. It is a function interface that takes one parameter as an input. So, for example, if we take integer as a type parameter and we want to test whether number is even or not. So, we can simply test it by a and modulo 2 is equals to 0. So, if 
any number can be divided by two such as two four six and eight so that number is the even number otherwise it's odd so we can just say it as even in all of these scenarios if you see we have defined the lambda expressions these expressions will only be executed when we call their methods explicitly every functional interface we can have only one method as the abstract method and that is what we can call here like in case of consumer so if we just say print dot accept and pass some value to it and now if i just run this so it printed hello right so this is only executed when we call this method explicitly similarly if you call this supply so you need to call the supply dot get method so it will only return you some values as out the supply dot get and when we run this test so this will print the hello world similarly we have this test even so to test your predicate you can just simply say as out and then test even dot it has a method test and if we pass 3 to it and similarly we will pass the even number let's test this for first number we have got false for other number we have got true when we pass the expression to our higher order function in those higher order function we will be calling these method that we have in the functional interfaces in the next video we will see the advanced use cases of higher order function and we will look into the streams api and the higher order functions such as map flat map filters etc so till then happy coding